This is the Seller Process Podcast, where we talk about the best systems, processes, and SOPs for your Amazon business so that you can regain control of your time, build up your team, and scale your e-com empire. Hello, entrepreneurs. If you are tired of uh, spinning your wheels on all the latest Amazon PPC tricks and tactics, and you're becoming overwhelmed by the increasing amount of effort that is required to manage your PPC campaigns, then this episode is for you. Our guest today will share with us the 80-20 of Amazon PPC, the most important actions you should take to maximize your returns on, on ad spend. To share his knowledge with us, we brought to the show Dr. Travis Ziegler, an optometrist turned e-commerce sellers. Uh, he, is, he is the founder of I Love, whose mission is to heal, heal uh, one million dry eye sufferers naturally. Due to the success of I Love, making uh, over $5.4 million in 2021, others have asked if Dr. Travis would help them grow their Amazon business, which led to the creation of the Profitable Pineapple Ads Agency, where Travis blogs about Amazon PPC and selling on Amazon. And he also created a free PPC masterclass, which you can check out on their website, Profit profitablepineapple.com. Hey, Travis, glad to have you here. How, are you, how, how is it going in, in Texas? Texas is, is going well. And first of all, I want to just thank you for having me on your show. Awesome. Awesome. Great. So um, you, you I, I think most people are familiar with the 80-20 rule, you know, uh, getting the uh, 80% of results from uh, 20% of action that applies to several things in, in life, in business, and in, in general. So uh, my first question for you would be, like, how does this rule apply to Amazon and, and PPC specifically? Yeah, so a uh, background to the, the Pareto's principle, which is the 80-20. I think it's actually an Italian uh, philosopher that actually came up with it. And how he came up with the 80-20 rule is actually he started noticing that 20% of the land or 80% of the land was owned by 20% of the people. 80% of the wealth was by 20% of the people. And then finally his garden, 20% of the seedlings he planted produced 80% of the crop. And so he created this 80, 20 rule that applied to everything in life. And so when you're looking at your Amazon business, 20% of your products are producing 80% of your revenue. 20% of your customers are producing 80% of your revenue. And when it comes to Amazon PPC, 20% of your search terms and ASINs that you find in your search term report, which we'll get into in a little bit, 20% of those are producing 80% of your results on Amazon PPC. And so what we want to do with Amazon PPC is focus all of our budget on that 20% and your profits will skyrocket. Okay. Okay. That's great. So, so basically the main goal here is to find those top keywords that 20% of the keywords that are driving 80% of sales, right? So 100%. what would be the process to, to start with that? So let, let's dive right in. Uh, what would be the steps we, we should take to, to identify and work with those 20% uh, of keywords? Yeah. It's incredibly easy to find this. And a lot of people don't know about this report. It's called a search term report. And this is in your campaign manager. So when you're in Amazon, you go into your campaign manager. There's a section there. If you scroll, go all the way to the left, there's a section there that looks kind of like a bar graph. And that bar graph, when you hover over it, it will pull up a menu that says reports. And so when you click on that reports, there's an area there that you can click that's called run reports. And when you run reports, the standard or the standard report that comes up is your search term report. So you actually don't have to do much. Um, so it will be your search term report. It will be the last 30 days. And then you can click run. That will give you the last 30 days of data. I like to take it one step further, but for those listeners that just want it easy, just click run report and you'll get enough data from that. What I like to do is I like to change the date range because you can go back pretty far. You can go back about 65 days. And so what I like to do is I like to go back the full 60 days and go as far back as we can. So usually it's about 65 days ago. So we're recording this in April. So we can go back all the way to February. So I pick February as my start date. February, I think it's like 23rd would be our start date. And I go, actually it'd be February, yeah, 23rd. And then I'd go all the way forward 60 days 
to April 23rd. So to give your listeners context, it's April 27th today. So I like to leave about four to five days there. And that's because of attribution. Amazon takes a little while to catch up sales. It's actually getting a lot better, but it still takes a little bit to catch up. And sometimes people don't buy for seven days and Amazon will capture that sale. So what I like to do is I like to go back and capture 60 days worth of data, but I like to leave a five day gap in order to let attribution catch up and to have real true data. It's still not perfect, but it's really good then. So that's your search term report. Like I said, if that sounded confusing to you and you don't wanna deal with that, literally you can go into the report section. The first report is search term report. Just go to the last 30 days, that's good enough data. And then click run report and then download it once it's all, all run. So that's how you get the report. Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. So definitely, uh, I think, um, most people are using a search, the search term report. So that the trick here is to go like 60 days to look at 60 days prior, uh, and leave, uh, five days, um, uh, off the, the, the report so that, you know, we don't account for, um, for, for data that maybe Amazon didn't uh, yet, you know, um, complete. So, uh, okay. Then after we create the search term report, what's next? So what I like to do with the search term report, it will be in an Excel format, Microsoft Excel. I I'm a Google drive guy. So I put it into Google drive. And then what I do is I sort that, that report. And so you can actually highlight the whole report and you can sort it by the orders column. The orders column is just how many orders you got based on that search term or that ASIN. And what I do is I sort it from highest to lowest. And so all the most orders will be at the top, fewest orders will be at the bottom, including the zero orders. What I do is I get rid of all search terms that have two or fewer orders. So I keep three or more orders. So two or fewer, I just delete them. I get rid of them. You can do more with that at a later step, but it's not something that we're gonna talk about, especially in this, because we're focusing on the 80-20. And so with all of those search terms that we save, that will be close to about 20% of your search terms, maybe more, maybe a little bit more. And then what we can do is we can analyze those. So what you're gonna notice is at the top of that search term report, there's gonna be search terms and ASINs that you're getting tons of sales on. And then towards the bottom, of course, only three sales. And to give you an example, my search term report has close to 13,000 search terms on it now. And you know we, probably delete it down to probably the top 10% now. So about 1300 words that we're really going after. And then once we sort it, you can sort it by product because then you can individualize it by each of your ASINs to really see what search terms are really coming through for each ASIN. And when we do that, we then have essentially the 20% of the search terms that are producing 80% of the results. That's what we want to focus on moving forward with our campaigns. And I'm sure we're going to talk a lot more about campaign structure for all these as well. Okay. Okay. That's great. So uh, then, you know, from this first uh, um, search, basically you, you will find a number of both keywords or, or say search terms and uh, ASINs. Uh, do, do you uh, treat them differently or like, should we separate search terms with uh, ASINs or what, what do we do with, with these two? Yeah, great clarification point. So what I like to do there is I do like to separate the ASINs from the search terms. Um, we'll talk about what we can do with both of them, but we'll talk about probably search terms first because I believe those are most important. Um, but ASINs are also important. They're just usually a little more expensive, but the ASINs, we just wanna kind of separate ASINs and separate search terms. And there's a really easy way to do that. So we already talked about sorting orders and you're gonna have a PDF that kind of explains exactly how to do this. Um, that I made for you all that shows you how to actually sort your Excel spreadsheets or your Google Sheets if you don't know how to do that. So we have already highlighted everything sorted by orders. And an easy way to separate out your ASINs is to highlight everything again and sort it by search terms. Because when you do that, every ASIN starts with the letter B. So it's going to put all the ASINs together. So you can highlight all those and separate those off into another sheet. And so very simple way to do that. And then I like to just go back in and sort it by orders again after I get that done. 
Okay. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Perfect. Just to clarify uh, for you guys, uh, as you, as you may, may or may not know in every episode, we have a uh, complementary material that goes along with uh, our discussion here. So you will find the, the, basically it's like an SOP uh, that um, uh, Travis, Travis uh, gave it to us uh, about, you know, this whole process that we're discussing. Uh, you will find that in the, in the show notes at the seller process.com or in in the, in the description of the YouTube video. Okay, so you can download the, the whole process step by step with video and uh, links to, to everything that it's needed and pictures actually that to help you, you know, go through that. But right now, you know, we're going through this process and maybe uh, creating like, like, like uh, going through, uh, going deeper in some points, you know, because we, we have the opportunity here to, to pick the brain of Travis live here. So uh, what do we do after we identify these keywords? Uh, what's the next step? So this is, a, this is a controversial area of Amazon PPC, but I'm a big fan of single keyword ad campaigns. And what that means is just each search term that we find, we're going to make one campaign for that. So instead of having a campaign with a bunch of ad groups with a bunch of different keywords, it's going to have one ad group and one keyword. So single keyword ad campaigns is just one keyword, one product, one campaign. Very simple. And with these search terms, we're going to make those exact match. Exact match campaigns are scale campaigns. These are the ones that you know this term is working. So we can start to bid a little bit more on this in order to, to push the rankings of that term to get higher up in the organic ranks because we've shown that it's profitable or we've shown that it makes sales. And if you look at the ACOS target, you can see that it's profitable as well. And so an exact match, single keyword ad campaign. If you wanna go deep into structure, what I like to do is a campaign bidding strategy of down only. I do like to, to adjust the top of search placement higher because we know this, this works. And then you can calculate your cost per click and exactly what it should be based on the math in the, the spreadsheet. Now that, that's getting really into the weeds. I don't know if we want to do that in the podcast because we do have it on the PDF on how to do that, but calculating your exact cost per click is pretty easy. It's a result of figuring out your profit, which I hope you know, and then your profit per product, and then calculating the clicks divided by the orders. And so essentially your, your clicks divided by orders with your maximum cost per acquisition, which is your profit, that will give you your maximum cost per click when you divide those two into each other. So hard to explain that verbally. And so that's why that PDF is so key. So make sure you look down in the description to get that PDF because I have an exact formula that you can just copy to get that. So just to summarize that again, single keyword ad campaign, exact match, campaign bidding strategy of down only, adjust the bid adjustment up 20% or more, and then calculate your CPC if you want to, or you can just start with, what you are using. So in your search term report, it will tell you what your cost per click is. And you can just use that one because it seems to be working really well. Um, now, I know the question will come out about, about what should we do about broad and phrase mm -hmm. campaign yes. types? Yes, yes, so, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that, that's if, a great if, one. If budget allows, open up broad and auto campaigns. So a broad campaign, again, a single keyword ad campaign, so my, my favorite example is eyelid wipes because I sell eyelid wipes. So it's one of our best keywords. So I make an exact match campaign for eyelid wipes with top of search adjusted up, bidding really high because it works so well. I will then make a broad campaign, same thing with eyelid wipes, with campaign bid strategy down, top of search placement up a little bit, not quite as much as the exact match. Broad campaigns are discovery campaigns. What we're trying to do with broad campaigns is we're trying to discover more search terms and ASINs, but discovery campaigns are, excuse me, just, just search terms for the broad. We're trying to discover more search terms that we can then move over to exact to then scale up those search terms. Now, an auto campaign is the same thing. It's a discovery campaign. Now you can't pick search terms based on that, but this is a way to discover more search terms to move to exact to scale up. But auto campaigns will also help you discover ASINs as well, which we can get into a little bit further later, but we're just talking about search terms for now. So exact match first, 
broad if you have the budget left over. Phrase, you can do phrase. Sometimes phrase works better, but phrase and broad are similar because they're both discovery campaigns. They're not, you're not looking to scale them. You can scale them. They do scale sometimes, but for the most part, broad phrase and auto campaigns are for discovery. They're to discover new search terms, to discover new ASINs, that's the auto campaign, to then move over to exact match and then scale those even more. Does that make right. sense? Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, this, is, this is very interesting. And that's, that's basically the 80-20 of PPC in a nutshell. So we're using auto and, uh, and broad campaigns to, as, a, as a discovery uh, campaign. So basically we'll find all the most profitable search terms and then we'll, we're going to create basically one keyword campaigns on all those, on, on, on all the main keywords that are uh, all the main search terms that are giving the most sales. Uh, just one question about that, because I think, you know, as, as you said, you know, not many people, there is, there is kind of an argument about this, you know, whether to, to do this or not. So uh, just for the skeptical people, like, what would you say, uh, what would be the reasons why we should go for this one keyword campaigns and not, you know, maybe as mainstream uh, says uh, going through, you know, like several keywords in one campaign, maybe with different uh, uh, ad groups and so on. So what, what would be, you know, the counter uh, to, to yeah. those people? We'd love to discuss that. So um, <laughs> the main reason is because you can get so granular on every single part of the campaign for that one keyword. So the campaign settings there's the up down strategy, the down strategy, the up only strategy. Then there's the top of search bid adjustment. Then there's the product page bid adjustment. And then there's the budget. And so those are all on a campaign level, meaning that if you have multiple ad groups and multiple search terms and keywords and ASINs all in one campaign, then all those settings are being adjusted based on every single keyword that's in there. Whereas in if you make it so granular that it's one keyword per campaign, all those settings are for that one keyword. And so that's how you can really scale keywords is based on just being able to change the campaign settings for that one keyword is a huge, huge factor in why we do that strategy. Because if you have 10 keywords in there, one keyword may be doing really well and another keyword not so well because the campaign settings. But then if you separate out the one that's not doing well and put it in its own its own campaign and then made settings adjusted to that keyword, it may start to, to do well again. And so that's why we like to do the single keyword ad campaigns. And we do the same thing in Google. We'll create single keyword ad campaigns. And the cool thing about Google is you can create your ad. And so we put that keyword that we're bidding on as the first word in the title or the, the headline. And so person searches, and the first thing they see with our ad is what they search for. And so you're almost reading the customer's mind, which you can also apply to sponsored brands, which we're not going to get into too much today, but sponsored brands, if you have a keyword that's working or a search term that's working and you bid on that exact match word, and you can put that in the headline of your sponsored brand headline search ad. And then person types it in Amazon or it types it into their phone on Amazon. That's the first thing they see. So you read their mind and the click-through rate for those campaigns are anywhere from 10 to 20%, which is massive in an advertising platform because that shows that that ad is relevant for that specific search term and Amazon will start to show you more and your, your clicks will get cheaper as a result. Wow, that's great. That, that's a great insight, a great tip. Um, so that was actually one of my questions. You know, like, should we use the same tactic also for for sponsored brands or display campaigns, or this is mostly for like a, a regular sponsored product campaign? So you can use it on everything. So sponsored products, sponsored brands, Google. You can use it for pretty much any search query based. Uh, platform. And that's why we love the strategy. Now to kind of go to the point of what do we do with the ASINs, which I'm sure your listeners are like, what about the ASINs? So that ASIN list, we can then create single ASIN ad campaigns. And those are going to be product targeting campaigns. 
And so a sponsored product, product targeting campaign and a sponsored display product targeting campaign. So we'll do both of those for those ASINs that are making a lot of sales. And that will help you scale the ASINs. A lot of people kind of forget about one or the other, that there's product targeting campaigns in two different areas of Amazon, sponsored products and sponsored display. So don't forget to make your single ASIN ad campaigns in both of those. That's going to help you scale as well. Interesting. And uh, what do you do about you know some of those uh, product uh, product targeting campaigns that, uh, you know, many times I see that um, top of search gets lots of views and clicks compared to, you know, the actual um, product pages, you know, because uh, even if we're targeting uh, products, then there is also a percentage of uh, views and clicks that goes into the top of search related to that ASIN. Uh, there is there any work around on that? Is it is some, always something that I've thought about and I haven't found a solution. <laughs> so you can adjust the, the bid adjustment for product pages up. And so bid, taking that up will take down the top of search. I know you can't take off top of search, but you can put that at zero with the product pages bid adjustment and turn that up. And that will get you featured more on product pages. Okay. Okay. Great. So that that's what we should do as well, right? Uh, you can you can try to see if it's going to work for you to see what's best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, all right. So then, uh, you know, my last question for you would be like, what are what do you see uh, being the most common mistakes people make when they uh, would like to scale their PPC efforts? So there's lots of strategies out there. The key with Amazon PPC is to follow one strategy, whether it be mine that I just explained here, and I go into a lot more detail in my free masterclass that, that you mentioned in the beginning, that's just one strategy that, that, that is out there. It's not, it's not the end all be all, it's not the best, um, but it's one of the best. And so there's lots of strategies out there. The key part is follow one strategy. If you're following different strategies, it's not only going to confuse you, it's going to frustrate you, and it's going to make you feel like you always have to be doing something. But once you figure out a strategy and a system that works, then, I mean, most of the systems that are out there do work. It's just a matter of sticking to one and doing it long enough to, to find success. And so is mine the only one that works? No, not at all. There's plenty out there. We're both in Titan. Titan has a completely different strategy than me. and that works too. And it's, it's okay because both strategies will work. If you find that you've tried a couple different strategies or a couple different agencies and nothing seems to be working, look at your business. It might be your business. Are you going after the same cookie cutter products that Chinese sellers are going after? That's going to be tough because they make the product so they can sell it for a lot cheaper than you. So you're always going to be fighting for the bottom. Do you have an audience that you're building? Are you creating a real brand versus just selling widgets from China? So think about that. So if you've tried multiple different Amazon PPC strategies, it's time to look internally at your brand to see what you're actually building. And you want to build something that's actually worthwhile, not something that's just selling pieces of plastic from China. And so really take a look at that. Follow one strategy until success. And if it's not working, go back and look at your brand. Awesome. Yeah, that's great advice. And that's what also uh, we, we preach here all the time, you know, go back to the fundamentals, you know, obviously PPC, it's uh, it's like something that amplifies our efforts. Uh, but, it, it, you know, we need to have the fundamentals in place, like a great listing, great pictures, great product and so on. So these are all the fundamentals that needs to be in place. Um, as you mentioned, to, to be successful. Uh, that was great advice. Thank you very much, Travis. And guys, I, I remind you that you should actually go um, download the, the SOP that Travis uh, made for us because uh, it's going to be very detailed with all the images following you know, step. You can follow that step by step to implement this strategy that we just spoke about. And uh, I remind you always my, my final sentence, the key to success is to emulate the best. So uh, go take action, follow the tips that uh, Travis just shared with us and, uh, uh, you know, you will 
will find success this way. Uh, thank you again, guys, for listening, and I hope to see you in the next episode. Uh, sorry, no, uh, Travis, tell us how can people find you and uh, <laughs> what uh, what can you do for them, and then we'll close the episode. <laughs> yeah, sounds sounds good. Thank you for allowing me to do this. So if you go to profitable pineapple.com profitable pineapple.com we do have our free masterclass you literally just put your email in there's no like upsell on the the back end it's just take the class and hopefully you'll enjoy it um, and then we manage amazon ppc for others so if you want somebody else to do it you can also go to profitable pineapple.com to kind of fill out an application and check us out and then finally on facebook is the easiest way to get a hold of me so amazon ppc pros is our Facebook group. And we have thousands of people in there all trying to help each other with Amazon PPC. I also release a lot of content and videos in there as well. So Amazon PPC pros on Facebook. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Now, so now we can really close. Guys, I really suggest you to, to follow Travis because he's a, he's a thought leader in PPC strategies and Amazon in general. So go follow him. Uh, go check out his uh, agency if you need help with PPC. And now it's really the time <laughs> that I can, I can thank you guys for, for listening. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Hey, entrepreneurs, I hope you enjoyed the episode and learned something from the interview. If you're serious about creating systems for your business, automating processes and building up your team so that you can transfer the tedious daily tasks in order to focus on more high level strategic tasks and work on your business and not in your business. I've created a guide for Amazon sellers named Capturing Systems and Creating SOPs that you can find at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook where you will learn how to leverage systems and SOPs in your Amazon business so that you can accomplish more by working less, optimize your time, automate and delegate tasks, and reap the benefits of being a true business owner and not simply an operator in your own business. Go download the ebook at thesellerprocess.com slash systems ebook and start implementing all the tips and insights that I share with you and leave us a review or a comment to let us know how, how the content we are sharing here is making an impact in your business. And have a productive week.